great to be in New Mexico. What a beautiful country in this weather. It's hot as hell in Gainesville, and it's so nice to have no humidity here. Greetings from the land of the Fighting Gators, the University of Florida in Gainesville, where as a community we're making cool things happen, cool things like creating jobs, fostering economic growth, and establishing an ecosystem of innovation and entrepreneurship. More about that in a few minutes. I've got to say a few words about your president. I must make a few comments about my dear friend, Bob George Frank, a former Gator, but now a Lobo. Yes, your new president and the guy with the last name that should be a first name and a middle name that could be both. <laughs> Bob and I were colleagues at the University of Florida. We shared the same hairdresser. He was a dean and I was the vice president for finance and administration. That is, most of you in the academy know, would be a very fragile relationship on a good day. <laughs> Deans hate structure, rules, budgets, process, or anything they don't control. According to Bob, I spent every waking hour dreaming up rules, regulations, and obstacles for deans, and in particular, Bob. So over time, we developed this locker room relationship. Bob has called me names I neither understood nor confused with an endearment. <laughs> I've often said that Bob, like most deans, was like the flying monkeys at the Wizard of Oz. They'll scare the hell out of you <laughs> at first blush. But after you get to know them, they're rather cute and useful. Now that Bob is President Frank, I guess we can shed this flying monkey label for me. I hope Bob will be more kind and sensitive to me as a president. While Bob would have been disappointed if I had not made some embellished comments, he is a good friend. UNM is fortunate to have such a talented and hardworking guy. Bob is a visionary, but trust me, he is not satisfied with the vision. He is all about execution and results. Add a touch of impatience, and you have the President Frank recipe for let's get it done. I understand at the University of New Mexico, Bob was a stud athlete, and he always had encouraged me to call him Varsity Bob. I never did. <laughs> Given his past athletic prowess and that air of competitive spirit, Bob will take UNM to the next level. I am excited for your university and your community and know that my friend, Bob Frank, will make a difference. And during the journey, Bob will make it fun. Enough of that, let's talk about economic development, creating jobs, 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 and establishing an ecosystem for innovation and entrepreneurship. Here's my plan. I'm gonna show you a two minute video it will kind of encapsulate what I'm going to talk about. I have a quick PowerPoint, and I think after hearing what you're doing here today, it will kind of give you some ideas of what we're doing, not that our recipe fits your community, but I think it will be somewhat uh, inspiring to see what other communities, who you're really in competition with. Trust me, all research universities are chasing the same goals. We're in competition with each other. And I do believe if higher education is to distinguish itself and stay relative, it's got to be engaged in economic development. So with that, let's show the video, and I'll come back with a quick PowerPoint. The ability to take innovative ideas from mind to market becomes exponentially greater in the right environment. Introducing Innovation Square at the University of Florida. Innovation Square is redefining the idea of how research and community become one ecosystem. A sustainable live, work, play environment. Innovation Square has all the elements to empower companies and entrepreneurs to create, develop, and commercialize discoveries. Innovation Square is where the University of Florida and the private sector fuse. Imagine access to cutting-edge research and information from the University of Florida. 
the number one ranked public university for transferring technology to the marketplace. Imagine interacting with leading researchers and recognized UF faculty that has garnered more than $619 million in research awards nationally. A super business incubator, Innovation Square has all the components for transferring ideas to the market, even connecting entrepreneurs with working capital. Innovation Square is a place to simply call home. Live within walking distance to work, shop at chic stores, dine in eclectic restaurants, enjoy our Greenway parks and trails. It's true town living for an exceptional quality of life. The city of Gainesville itself is a reason to locate here. Gainesville is recognized by Forbes and Fortune as one of the top cities for businesses and careers. Vibrant and alive, downtown Gainesville has so much to offer. Gainesville is also a place to put down roots with some of the nation's best schools. Innovation Square, bringing technology, people, and research at UF together to achieve something exponentially greater. tells those companies we're trying to recruit to Gainesville to join our spin-off companies what we're trying to create in our live work play environment. Here's what we're doing. We're trying to create a, a ecosystem of success. It's called a live work play community within our community. We have captured 40 acres. We're going to build five and a half million square feet and I'm try, I was trying to put it in perspective here uh, within your community. If you took a 13 block area and you had the University of New Mexico on one end and what I, I think you call your old town on the other end, less than a mile, very walkable, we're building a community right in the middle of the University of Florida, which is 2,000 acres, and Old Gainesville. It's all about location and proximity, and we're going to create jobs. This is the vision, it's urban living. We think people now are, are escaping their cars. They, they want to live, work, and play in the same place, and that's going to drive this new economy. We're going to encourage commercialization, and through that, we're going to grow the economy. That way, uh, that, that drives collaboration, which you use that word, but we're trying to change that word to collision. We want groups to run into each other, to have explosions, to work on problems that we never thought about before. We had a little success back in the early 70s, a little thing called Gatorade that we're still selling a little bit of, and uh, between us and PepsiCo, we make a little bit of money. So we've had some, uh, some success here. This is the traditional university mission. I know all the uh, academy members in here could talk about this. Uh, service, research, and instruction. This is our new mission statement. And we're going to take those three pillars, put them around economic development. Everything that we do, we're going to put through that lens of economic development. We're going to encourage this. You've talked a lot about this today. We want our faculty to create research that can be commercialized. And on the way, we hope they generate a lot of intellectual properties. I mentioned proximity. This kind of gives you, you can see from our super incubator and in Innovation Square, the campus. Turn the other direction and you can see old downtown Gainesville. We're going to build this community right there, and we're learning that when you look back at the research parts, which we had one, 1985, is very successful. Today, it's our biotech incubator, very, very successful part, but it's 15 miles from campus. That is one of the biggest negatives I think we learned about research parts. The faculty are not encouraged to be on the park campus. 
proximity is everything. We think, and we already are learning, that having this type of facility close to the campus, both corporate entities want to be there, but your faculty want to be around there. Stakeholders. I can't say enough about this. We don't have the time to go through each stakeholder. You have a unique moment. If you look at this room, it's full of decision makers. It tells me that your community is ready to change and make a difference. You have a unique opportunity. That window is open today to do things you could never do before. Let's take, for example, the city of Gainesville. A very traditional model of build and pay as you go. The developers hated that. They came to Gainesville and said, can I build something? Well, give me your money. We'll develop a plan. Two years later, we might have started a building. If you're going to attract companies to this community, they want to make a decision today and go tomorrow. We had the opportunity, like you, to change the rules. And we did. Don't lose that chance. You have unique opportunities today. That, that perfect storm of attitudes, because we're all being challenged the same way, is here upon you. Seize it. Uh, one thing, let's talk about public schools. Trust me, when you're out recruiting companies, they want good public school infrastructure. They want to know that their employees will have a good experience when they move to your community. And if you're going to create spinoffs and you want them to stay in your community, same thing. We worry because we don't have a big regional airport like you do that that was going to be our weakness. We're recruiting companies today that have yet to ask about the airport. They ask about public schools. They ask about safety. They ask about sustainability. What's the environment going to be like for their employees? We talk about this ecosystem. At the bottom, you see the Cade Museum. Dr. Robert Cade is the one who invented Gatorade. As a museum now in Gainesville, and we're inspiring young third, fourth, fifth, and sixth graders to be inventive. That's that ecosystem that runs from elementary school to a retirement community, engaging people on that entire spectrum of innovation and entrepreneurship. One of the things the University of Florida did was create the University of Florida Development Corporation. It signaled that the university was in the economic development business. Purchase some land, we're going to develop it, it's going to be developed with private development funds, even the vertical improvements on that 40 acres will be taxable. We're not going to shelter like most, I mean like all of our campus lands are. They will be taxable. If you're going to drive the economy, you've got to play in the economy. The university is not going to build these facilities. They're going to be built with private dollars. This is our newest incubator. We have five in the community. I'll list them in a few minutes. Uh, this is the Innovation Hub. It opened in October. 50,000 foot square foot incubator. It has 25 companies in it already. Uh, it's amazing what's going on there. But this was our only investment from the university. Uh, we had a grant and we matched it, built this incubator. All the development will be right around it. One of the things you will learn and that you probably already know is that your spinoffs are going to need a place to house themselves once they graduate. One of the problems we have with all of our spinoffs, once they get to a certain level, of say eight to 10,000 10, square feet, they have to leave town. We didn't have 20,000 square feet, 30,000 square feet to let them grow within our community. This is our first building, an eight story building. You can see we're going for density. It's called the Infusion Technology. It'll be 150,000 square foot class A office space right next to our incubator, which is already constructed. You can see it's a three story and we're going very dense. Uh, to get five and a half million square feet on less than 20 acres. This is something a little bit unique. Entrepreneur's dorm. Call it a dorm incubator. <laughs> We're going to incubate undergraduates. 
look at the millennial generation, the high school graduates who already have inventions who are coming to your campus. It's going to be a 185 bed dorm that you're going to have to compete to get in. And we're going to expect you to create a business, generate a business, or foster your invention. Capstone project at the end, on the top floor, we're going to put some penthouse suites. If you're in the C-level, CEO, CFO, and you'll come to speak to our students in this facility, we'll put you up for free. You get to stay there, spend a couple hours with them. In the basement, we're going to create a garage so that they can collaborate. On most campuses, you discourage students from having a business in your dorms on campus. You don't want the FedEx trucks driving on campus doing something. We're going to encourage it here. This is right across the street from our incubator. Collaboration, collision. We just finished building last August a research graduate dorm. One block from the undergraduate dorm. It's 90% occupied today, nothing but graduate students. One floor may be engineering, one floor may be business. 550 beds here, graduate students, right in Innovation Square. This is a 120,000 square foot building right across the street as well that was an old medical plaza. We're using this as transitional space. A lot of spin-offs can't afford Class A office space in their first move. This is transitional space. If we're recruiting a company and they say, I want to be there in six months, we got a space for you. You've got to have a solution for every question. Be ready when you get into this, this game. Another thing we're doing, we're creating the Innovation Academy. One of the things that we recognize, even in, with 52,000 students, is we had capacity in the summer to grow our enrollment. So what we have done is create a new academic year that will run January through August. We have 29,000 applications for 6,500 freshman spots each year. So we've got capacity. We've got the students. We're going to create a new academic year called Innovation Academy. We did not publicize this at all. At 2,900 students say, I'm interested in getting into the academy. We admitted 500 that will start in January of 2013 without any PR at all. This group will take any major on campus. We'll put a minor on top of it in innovation. And you see the curriculum. I've never seen the academy turn around when we started mucking around with the curriculum. They turned this around in six months. Students love it. We already have big corporate very interested. They said, what are you doing? Is this going to get me closer to talent that is really ready to go to work? And the answer is yes. For so long, I think the Academy has said, I'll teach you how to learn, but I'm really not going to give you the applied skills to begin a job. Got to change that a little bit. Innovation Academy is something different. It's part of the ecosystem. Incubators. We have five in the community. Uh, I talked a little bit about Innovation Hub. That's our newest. It's a science and technology incubator. We have our biomedical biotechnology that's been around since 1985. It's a much longer incubation process. They graduate in seven to ten years. We're graduating uh, companies out of science and technology every month now much shorter incubation period. Uh, our community college, and now our college, has an incubator for uh, just general ideas. One of the most successful companies to come out of there so far is something called Student Made. You've got to have a 3.5 grade point average to be a maid and service the community. So you have the best and brightest students coming as students to do housekeeping services. Now they're creating one
called a student nanny service. These are the type of things that give your community that ecosystem, that feeling that something special is happening. It's all over. You've got the, the entire spectrum. Uh, and this, our, our city has a, a, a local community incubator that's doing very well. And even our private developer has a hacker space because as you know, technology is moving so quickly, you've got to encourage those guys. They're creating mobile apps every day. This is one of our early successes. It's a global IT company, co-headquartered in the U.S. and in India. They are now helping us recruit companies. They promised hundreds of jobs. Their initial request was for 45,000 square foot of space. Average wage, $85,000. Big, big. What are some of our challenges? Like I said, we thought it was going to be the airport. Every company that we're recruiting thinks alligators are walking on the streets of Gainesville. <laughs> they do not understand that we seldom ever see an alligator, but that is something we have to deal with, and, and communities have to learn what your weaknesses are. Some of our selling points are probably some of your selling points. When you look at rental rates for business, and it's all about the business plan, there's your margins. Look at the, the, the corporate locations and the business costs. We can make their margins work. If I were you, this close to California, I would be recruiting that state heavily. Look at the cost of talent. Same thing, great talent coming out of the University of Florida, great talent coming out of your universities. What does that do to the bottom line? That's some of your selling points. I'm going to stop there because Connie is behind schedule. Uh, here again, I want to tell you what you're doing today is wonderful stuff. Don't let the moment escape you. You've got an opportunity here to change a lot very quickly and make this a, a, a different place. Thank you. Go Gators!